Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a written letter to the chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council in Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan, on the bilateral brotherly relations. The chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council received the letter in Khartoum, delivered by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. The minister conveyed to General Al Burhan the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and his wishes of abundant health and happiness, of further security, stability, and prosperity to the Sudanese people. General Burhan asked the minister to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and his wishes of further development and growth to Bahrain. He expressed pride in the bilateral deep-rooted brotherly relations and affirmed Sudan's keenness on developing them at various levels for the interests of the two countries. The two sides reviewed the development of relations and aspects of cooperation to achieve common goals. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 6 of the year 2023, restructuring the Advisory Committee of the National Qualifications Framework, NQF, at the Education and Training Quality Authority, BQA. Based on the proposal of the Chairman of the BQA Board of Directors, according to the Edict, NQF Advisory Committee shall be chaired by BQA Chief Executive Officer and comprised of the following members. Sheikh Ma'ad bin Adhaj Al Khalifa, representing the Civil Service Bureau. Dr. Samir Otoum, representing private universities. Dr. Muhammad Abdullah Baqir, representing public universities. Dr. Samah Muhammad Al Ajawi, representing the Ministry of Education. Dr. Amina Muhammad Bouallai, representing the Higher Education Council. Ahmed Jafar Muftah, representing the Ministry of Labor. Ahmed Abdullah Abdul Rahim, representing the private sector. Professor Nawaf Muhammad Al Jishi, representing private institutes. The edict stipulates that the first five members will serve for a four-year term, while the others will serve for three years. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Limsalem, congratulated Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the occasion of Arab Women's Day. The Speaker praised the gains achieved by Bahraini women, their prominent position, outstanding contributions, and active role within His Majesty the King's Comprehensive Development March, and with the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He expressed deep appreciation for the efforts of the SCW led by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King in achieving the progress of Bahraini women, their presence in Arab and international forms, and the support to women's contributions to the development of countries and societies. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh as Saleh also congratulated Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on Arab Women's Day. As Saleh praised the support Bahraini women enjoy from His Majesty the King in light of His Majesty's reform project, he expressed pride in the achievements made by Bahraini women as a result of the efforts and follow-up of Her Royal Highness to implement constructive projects, plans, programs and strategies through her leadership of the Council. The International Swimming and Aquatic Federation and the Bahrain Olympics Committee have announced plans to establish a new center of excellence for water sports in the kingdom. In partnership with the GFH Financial Group and the Bahrain Swimming Federation, the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, First Deputy Chairman, General Sports Authority, Chairman and Bahrain Olympics Committee President Zainal Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the signing of an agreement between the International Swimming and Aquatics Federation and GFH Financial Group. The president of the International Swimming Federation, Hussein Msellem, Zimbabwean Sports Minister Christy Sword, ministers, senior officials and world swimming champions attended the ceremony. The partnership will witness the establishment of an international aquatic center at the Bahrain Technology University, featuring two Olympic-sized swimming pools and 150 rooms for players with all facilities. The center will be used for international championships annually with a capacity of 1,800 people. It will also include a sports medical center under the supervision of technicians from the International Federation and all coaches who will supervise training in the center will be appointed by the International Aquatics Federation. Marking the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed delight at the agreement which marks the launch of one of the biggest sports projects in the history of Bahrain. His Highness added that the project will transform Bahrain into a regional and international center for water sports and enhance sports tourism in the kingdom. 
expressing thanks to the president of the International Swimming Federation, Hussein Msalem, and GFH Financial Group CEO, Hisham al -Rais. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Ziyani, held a meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Commerce of Hungary, Peter Sayarto. Dr. Ziyani delivered a speech in which he affirmed Bahrain's keenness to further enhance the bilateral cooperation to serve common interests. He highlighted the importance of His Majesty the King's visit to Hungary in 2019, which contributed to enhancing the bilateral cooperation. He affirmed the importance of exchanging visits to further enhance the bilateral cooperation. Ziyarto has praised the advanced level of the bilateral cooperation and affirmed his country's keenness to further enhance these relations. The two sides' cooperation in various fields, especially the economic and commerce fields, in addition to discussing investment opportunities, they also discuss enhancing joint coordination in the political field regarding various regional and international issues. They also discussed world issues, including the Palestinian cause, and affirmed the importance of the efforts of the international community to resolve all conflicts to achieve further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and his Hungarian counterpart have held a press conference. Dr. Zayani affirmed that the two sides discuss means of developing bilateral cooperation in various areas, mainly in the economic investment trade and development fields. The two sides also stressed the need to continue joint efforts to strengthen friendship and cooperation and building on what has been achieved from the results of the first meeting of the Bahraini Hungarian Economic Committee. Dr. Zayani affirmed the importance of the private sector role in increasing trade exchange between the two countries. They also discuss opportunities to enhance cooperation and joint coordination in the political and diplomatic fields, in addition to coordinating stances on regional and international issues and exchanging support at global forums. The Hungarian minister affirmed Bahrain and Hungary are looking or working for world peace and they share the mutual stance regarding the war in Ukraine, praising the signing of the Abraham Accords by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the UAE, describing it as a courageous step of spreading peace in the Middle East region. The government of Hungary has conferred the Hungarian Order of Honor on the Foreign Minister, Affairs Minister, in recognition of his efforts to develop relations of friendship and expand joint cooperation. The Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Tsiarto, has handed over the medal to Dr. Zayani, also in recognition of his role in Bahrain's support to Hungary during the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, which had a great impact on saving lives and economic recovery. Dr. Zayani expressed thanks and gratitude to the Hungarian government, taking pride in the solid bilateral relations binding the two countries. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Director General of the Office of the President of Hungary, Gargoli Akler. The two sides discussed the bilateral relations and the advanced level achieved in all fields and ways to strengthen the bilateral cooperation. During the meeting, the importance of exchanging visits by senior officials of the two countries and the continuation of communication and joint coordination to enhance and develop the bilateral cooperation process, especially in the economic and development fields, and unite efforts on facing challenges, crises, and regional and international issues were emphasized. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly of Hungary, Is Tivan Jakab. The two sides discussed the outstanding bilateral relations in addition to the efforts exerted to enhance and develop the bilateral cooperation in all fields. The meeting also reviewed horizons of joint cooperation in the parliamentary field as well as unifying stances in international forms towards global challenges. They also tackled aspects of bilateral cooperation of common interest and the importance of joint coordination to strengthen and develop cooperation in the fields of higher education, agriculture, food security, renewable energy, in addition to other vital areas for the benefit of the two friendly countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Chairman and Co-Chief Executive Officer of MOL Hungarian Oil Gas Company, Zoltanad. The two sides discuss aspects of economic and trade relations and ways of boosting joint cooperation in the oil and gas fields. They also discussed current oil supplies in the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech during a lecture in the Diplomatic Academy in Hungary in the presence of a number of senior officials. He affirmed that Bahrain is moving on to the path of a firm and wise approach in line with the vision of His Majesty the King to spread peace among nations and enhance the values of coexistence, respecting international law and non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries. He added that spreading peace should be the approach of any country in order to achieve progress and prosperity. He added that peace is one of the most important values in Bahrain, where the kingdom is a place where different religions and sects coexist. He highlighted the recent historic visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to the kingdom and its importance in enhancing the values of peace and tolerance. He also added that Bahrain always seeks to spread peace, which is evident through the signing of the peace declaration with Israel, as well as through the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. Dr. Zayani highlighted the government's role in this regard, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. On the international level, the minister affirmed that the kingdom works on supporting and enhancing the field of human rights and delivering humanitarian aid to the needy around the world. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Wal Mbarak, met with the head of the UN Habitat Country Programme in Bahrain, Fernanda Lonardoni. The two sides discussed joint initiatives, the United Nations Programme and the UN Human Settlements Development Programme. The Minister has stressed the importance of the private and civil sectors in implementing the National Afforestation Strategy. He highlighted the goals for doubling the number of trees in the Kingdom by 2035, based on the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Ellen Barak stressed that the programs offered by the ministry that enforce community partnership have achieved positive results during the last period. He added that the programs aim to stimulate the private and civil sectors to interact practically within the afforestation strategy, stressing the level of community partnership to achieve the goals COP of COP26. Lunardoni has praised the kingdom's achievements during the past year, which exceeded the percentages set in it for it in the afforestation process. She has stressed the program's keenness to further cooperate and achieve sustainable development goals and human well-being. The Chief of Public Security Attorney General Tariq Al Hassan has met with the UAE Minister of Interior Under Secretary Major General Khalifa Al Khaili. During the meeting, the two ministers have agreed to launch and inaugurate the bilateral linkage system for traffic systems to be the first bilateral linkage project within a Gulf technical system. The Chief of the Public Security affirmed that the meeting reflects the determination to achieve what was agreed upon in security cooperation and joint projects. He expresses thanks for the efforts of the work team that resulted in the launch of the system which reflects the level of cooperation and coordination between the two countries. He added that the launch of the system achieves mutual benefits and contributes to the development of cooperation and coordination in the traffic field. 
The National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR, in cooperation with the concerned entities, conducted more than 3,000 inspection visits within the local markets of the governance of Bahrain during 2022. The campaigns resulted in reporting 1,700 violations that required the imposition of administrative fines in accordance with the VAT and the exercise or excesses law, in addition to monitoring several suspicions of VAT and excesses evasion that have required the precautionary closing of several businesses. Accordingly, the NBR has taken legal action against the violating businesses and referred those who are proven to have committed one of the evasion crimes to the competent authorities to initiate a criminal case against them, which may be punishable by imprisonment for five years and a fine equivalent to three times the amount of VAT due according to the VAT law or by imprisonment for one year and a fine equivalent to double the evaded excesses according to the excise law.